Today my postcard is from a royal palace that is awash with Tudor history, Stuart history, British history of all kinds. We're in Hampton Court in the county of Middlesex. I don't know if you're like me, but when you think of Hampton Court, I often think of Cardinal Wolsey, and why shouldn't you? Because this is the man, really, that gave Hampton Court its name. And, in fact, he acquired Hampton Court in uh, 1508. He was Archbishop of York, King Henry VIII had come to the, uh, the throne, and he was the Chancellor to Henry. And, of course, when you've got such high status, you need a place to show off, to prove to everybody that you had power. And that's why he came to Hampton Court. Around here, this base court, this huge courtyard, you've got 40 guest lodgings. Each guest would have had an inner and an outer room, and most importantly, they had their own loo. Have you seen it then? His coat of arms. You see, he had a 99-year lease here on Hampton Court, but in 1528, Cardinal Wolsey had to give the palace over to the king, because the king liked it, and if the king likes it, then the king must have it. And Henry had the clock up there installed, very famous clock, the Zodiac clock. That was so that he could tell the time of the tide so he could go on the river to wherever he wanted to go up the Thames. I'm now standing in Fish Court, and you know, when Henry VIII moved his royal court in anywhere, but here at Hampton Court, one of his favourite palaces, you could imagine that here was a hive of activity of people moving in to feed the man that not only loved his food, but just loved life. Well, we're here in the great kitchens. All the preparation will be going on here. You can see lots of things. Leeks, which is very appropriate since the Tudors originally came from Wales, and you've got all of the sauces in great pots and the charcoal underneath that would have up and give bubbling stews and broths and all kinds of things to pour over the food. And into here, from the preparation, this is where all the cooking took place. And you can see all around you, there's, there's all kinds of things. You know, it took 200 people here to prepare the food for 800 members of the royal court and that was twice a day. Laid out here is the food for the feast of St John the Baptist in 1542. There'll be carp uh, from the lakes here or the ponds here at Hampton Court. There's prunes and there's pies. In fact, there's lots of pies. You could call Henry VIII the desperate Dan of the medieval age. Long before Wimbledon, they were playing tennis here in Middlesex, as Leslie Ronaldson tells us. What's your role here? I'm one of the professionals here, and that uh, comprises giving lessons, organising bookings, making the balls, stringing rackets. Now show us one of those balls, first of all. This is a completed ball. There's uh, about 60 to 70 stitches in each ball. We hand sew them. Very and hard. They're very hard, a little yeah. like a rounder's ball. Uh, they used to be made with animal hair, and uh, human hair and animal leather. And this is one of the old rackets. Uh, yes, let's have a look at the rackets, because that's very different to Wimbledon, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it's the shape of the hand. Uh, in the olden days, they used to actually play with the hand. A long time ago, the game started in the 5th century in Tuscany when they played with the hand. And then, gradually, the racket obviously became... Um, you could win more often with the racket. And uh, by the 16th century, people started to only use the racket. How old is this court here? Originally, tennis would have been played here by Cardinal Wolsey's group. Um, Henry VIII would have played on this site, but this court was first built in 1626 by Charles I. So uh, we know he played here. Charles II used to play a lot as well. This is just beautiful. Get a butcher's of this. It's glorious. The gardens. The Garden of Eden. Must have looked a bit like this. Now, in 1689, William and Mary came jointly to the throne. And uh, you can see there how the Stuart 